this is our project for today. This mower here has been sitting for about five years and uh, when we went to start it, of course, it wouldn't start. The first thing I had to do was replace the back. And so the engine will turn over now. But it will not start. Uh, if I spray some starting fluid in the air filter, it will start, but then it dies. Um, so I'm pretty confident we have to rebuild the carburetor on this one. Anytime you have a lawnmower that's been sitting for that long, um, most likely you're going to have fuel system problems and uh, you'll have to rebuild the carburetor or at least clean it out. As you can see, the mower itself is in pretty good shape. Uh, we have an 18 and a half horsepower newer Briggs and Stratton engine. It's a twin cylinder in tech. I've already disconnected the wiring and to remove the hood, you just pull it up as you lift up here comes right off. So we'll want to take the air filter cover off. See what it looks like down in there. This is our fuel pump here. There is a quick way we can test the fuel pump just to make sure that's not the problem. Basically, we'd want to remove this, uh, the output hose here that goes into the carburetor. And when we turn the engine over, we should have gas coming out of that port. So you can just remove this hose here, the output hose from the fuel pump. And when we turn the engine over, we should have fuel coming out of there. And we're just verifying that the fuel pump is working. Yep, that's what we wanted to see. So we know the fuel pump is good. Looks like if we take off this heat shield here, we'll have a lot better uh, view of the carburetor. So let's do that. It's a half inch wrench I have here. Something else we're going to want to test, uh, just because it's real easy to do, is the fuel solenoid right there, or they call it an anti-backfire solenoid. That's the bottom of the carburetor that it's mounted to. Now when you turn the key to the first position, uh, not the position that starts the lawnmower, but the first position, which is the accessory position, you should hear this little component click. And then when you turn off the key, it should click again. Uh, if you're not getting uh, a click out of this little component here, most likely it's gummed up or failing. Uh, this one sat for five years, so I'm pretty sure it's just gummed up. I've already turned the key on and off, on and off, and couldn't get it to click. So I'm pretty sure uh, the carburetor is gummed up. And it looks like we're going to have to remove the red engine cover. And we have six um, bolts that go all the, way, all the way around that hold it on. So I'm going to grab a three, uh, three eighths inch socket and take that off. Three eighths. Okay, let's see if we can pull this thing off. I think I also need to take that black piece off. And there's four bolts. I'll use a 5 16 socket to get that off. You can't take off this red cover until you take off this black cover. I might have to take this off too. Now this is just so we can get to the carburetor. You know, it's starting to rain out here, so I better head inside. Okay, so it's a week later. Uh, it started raining, and uh, it hasn't stopped for about a week. I'm really happy to see the sunshine today. Um, so I do, I think this is where we left off. I was removing this. You have two 3 eighths 
uh, bolts on each side. Take off that ugly thing. And, uh, I've already loosened up all the bolts that hold the engine cover on. So I think we're ready to come off. Yep. So far so good. No mouse houses or anything like that. A lot of times I'll find mice uh, inside these engines. We're going to focus on the carburetor. So let's take that sucker off. Uh, yeah, how am I going to take that off? What the heck? How do you take this thing off? Well, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to take this thing off. Um, I'm going to keep scratching my head here and I'll get back to you as soon as I figure it out. Well, I know those are the bolts I need to take out, but there's no access to them. As you can see, there's a couple on each side. Uh, I'm thinking I might have to take off the whole manifold here to get the carburetor off. I guess that's not that big of a deal, but uh, I'll probably have to replace the gaskets on the intake there, each side. Well, it looks to me like we have to take off the manifold. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Looks like you can use a Torx or a 3.8. They're pretty easy to get to, so go ahead and take off the fuel line here. Give it a wiggle. There we go. Only four bolts, so I guess it's not too bad. And they're easy to get to. And I bet you if we give it a little tap here, yep, see it'll come loose. We just need to disconnect the cables at this point. Looks like uh, they're a size T Torx 25 star bolt. All right, and just pull it down and pull it out. And then your throttle cable down here. See what I'm working on down there? Yeah. All right. So there's still a couple of linkages where we're connected. One area where we're still connected is the uh, the fuel solenoid there that I was talking about earlier, or the anti-backfire solenoid. That's the little component that should click when you turn your key to the first position. And it's just an electrical plug-in. Come on, baby. Ah, it's being a stinker. Come on, man. Don't want to break that component. That's about a $50, $70 component. So be careful. Oh, I finally got it off of there without breaking anything, hopefully. You also have your um, breather hose back here that you'll want to disconnect. And it just pops right out. It looks like that's what was holding it in place. Uh, now I'm sure we can get it off the linkage. Jeez. Wish I knew what I was doing. All right, so here's the linkage we need to get it off. And it looks like, uh, yeah, it comes off real easy now. Just pull it out. And now we're free to inspect this baby. As you can see, the gaskets uh, remained intact. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse them. There's no rips or tears in them. I'm sure they'll work just fine again. Uh, feel free to replace them if you want to replace them, but I'm pretty sure these ones will work just fine. All right, so here we are, and it does look like we can start taking this carburetor apart now that we have it off the machine. Oops. And I can already smell stinky gas. I'm going to put on some gloves. Looks like we'll need a 7 16 socket. Looks like there's four bolts that hold this part of the intake on. That 
gas is nasty smelling. I can smell that's, I can tell that that's uh, old style gas, not ethanol. Has a real strong smell to it. Ethanol kind of starts to smell sweet when it goes bad. All right, look at that. Preserve the gasket so we can reuse it. Um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad in there. We can move the throttle plate here and see that that's not bound up. That linkage is moving freely, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and take off the, uh, the float bowl here. It looks like we need a heavy duty Phillips or a good size flathead. Oh, you don't want to strip those out. I just want to try and loosen up these components a little bit before I try and take them off. That screwdriver doesn't fit. I'm going to try a flathead here. Oh boy! Be careful not to strip these out. Oh, you'll be hating life if you strip them out. Oh boy, I'm just going to strip them out. i got to figure something out here. I'm going to try a little bigger flathead screwdriver here. That didn't work. Okay, so here's how I'm going to try and do this. I have a quarter inch socket and the closest fitting Phillips uh, screwdriver bit I could find. Once again, you want to make sure you don't strip it out. Make sure it fits nice and snug. And I'm going to try and take it off this way. Oh, damn. I'm going to strip something. Better try something else. Shit. Okay, here's another attempt. Uh, I've got a long, skinny screwdriver. And I'm going to slide it in like this. And then pry it. That's not going to work either. Okay, so here's what I'm going to try next. Hammer and chisel. Um, the idea is to put the chisel... Alright, so I'm going to put the chisel right here. And give it a good sharp whack. Hopefully I can break it free. starting to get to the point here where I'm going to be damaging things, but I've got to get it off. Just a good sharp tap. One good tap will get it. I got it. See? I got it. All right. One down. One to go. One good sharp tap. Did I get it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a real good way to uh, loosen up tight screws. Tech tip number 22,462. Give this a couple of wraps. Uh, oh, I forgot we have to take off this solenoid. This is a half inch wrench uh, that I made that works. Basically, you just have to thin out the metal at the tip there. As you can see, I've ground it down a little bit. Uh, so you do that and you have yourself a tool to take off that uh, fuel solenoid or anti-backfire unit, whatever you want to call it. Might have to put one of these screws back in to keep it from spinning. Alright, now we'll try this. Oh, there we go! And I know what I'm going to find, or at least what I think I'm going to find, is the little plunger on here will be all frozen up. It's somewhat frozen up, 
Um, you can see it, it moves up and down, but it's lost some of its travel. So I'm going to clean that out and uh, get that component working again. Put a carburetor cleaner. Oh yeah. See, we're, we've already fixed it. So I was right, it was stuck. And you look now, and you have a lot more travel here. So uh, you just want to make sure that component's in good shape. And let's go ahead and test it now to see if it's working. So to do that, I'm just going to uh, step right over to here and hook it up to the wires that we disconnected. I don't think it matters which way you uh, plug it in. Okay, so... All right. Okay, so watch what happens when I turn the key to the first position. It should suck that little plunger in if your battery's charged up. Yep, see that? So we know that our anti-backfire solenoid, or our fuel solenoid as I call it, is good. Time to move on. So now we're back over here. So here we are, and we should be able to take the float bowl off now. now you know, luckily, <clears throat> this carburetor is not too gummed up. Uh, we'll need everything cleaned out. As you can see the float bowl here, we have some residue and sediment down in there. We'll want to make sure that's all spotless. And uh, also we'll continue disassembling this carburetor, making sure all the ports and passages are clean. Take out the float pin. A lot of times these get stuck in place. This one's not too bad. Don't lose any parts, like I do. And here's your float. Your float and your float valve on here. You can see this is a rubber tipped uh, float needle. So there is uh, no seat to replace down in there. And all you have to replace is the uh, float needle if you want to rebuild it. Now it's very important to replace the uh, the float needle if you're inside the carburetor. If the if the carburetor is over five years old, it's always a good idea to replace the float needle. It's cheap and it'll save you a lot of uh, headaches in the long run. So there's supposed to be an open passageway, I'm pretty sure, but all that's down in there is gunk. And there's your main jet on the side there. Um, and I can tell that this one's plugged up. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's stuff down in there, so got to clean that out. Well, after fiddling around a bit, spraying some carburetor cleaner down in there, I can finally see that there's a hole down in there. It looks like this whole component, this whole black component needs to be removed with two screws down in here. Definitely don't want to strip these out. Hopefully they'll come out easy. Yeah. Very delicate parts, so be careful. I'm not sure what we're gonna find in here, folks. Okay. Ah. I kinda recognize some of that stuff. So yeah, it looks like we have a um, little tiny two little tiny pickup nozzles there and if you look real close you can see that there's some holes that need to be cleared out in there it doesn't look like there's holes that go down through the center but there's definitely um, holes on on every side of those little buggers you'll want to make sure those are clear looks like we have a little rubber gasket down in there so be careful with that this little guy it's got these holes there oops don't lose those screws looks like we're going to have to disassemble um, this part here to get into the main jet and hopefully you can unscrew the main jet fairly easily because when they get locked in place that's a real bugger this 
So that little guy is dirty and plugged. We'll want to clear him out. That's your main jet. And it looks like this little part, and it looks like this part is just uh, pressed into place with an O-ring. So we're going to clean out, uh, clean off and clean out all these components. So with this component, uh, these two small holes here actually connect uh, into the bigger holes inside of here. Make sure all the ports and passageways are clear. Clean up this component uh, and then reassemble. You can just use a toothbrush for this if you want. Now that this piece is dried off, you can really see all the, the gunk in there that needs to be cleaned pipe cleaner here. There was really a lot of stuff down in here that I had to clean out. So everything's all cleaned up and I'm going to start. Ah dang, I got to take off my gloves. These components are both cleaned up. The main jet and whatever this is called. So we'll go ahead and reassemble. Not too tight because you can uh, strip things out pretty easily. So we have this piece all cleaned up too. I'll spray a little WD-40 in there and on the O-ring just to help get things back together. And I don't know if it matters which way the main jet is pointing when you reassemble it. Um, but I'm going to look back on the tape because I forgot to, to look to see which way it was and I'll reinstall it the way it was. And since this hole here is your main um, fuel inlet into the carburetor and where your float needle goes, I want to make sure and clean that out really well. You don't want to stick anything in there that can damage it. And I don't know if you can see in there but it is nice and clean. And I think this is as far as I'm going to disassemble this carburetor. Uh, I believe these components here, this is just a insulator spacer. Um, and the carburetor wasn't that dirty, so I don't think I'm going to disassemble it any further. So I'm gonna put this guy back in place. And as I said, I don't know if it matters which way this goes, but I looked at the tape and uh, it looks like it was like that, so that's how I'm going to reinstall it. Very delicate, you definitely don't want to over tighten these. Uh, you will break something if you do, and you'll be hating life. Not too tight. You could break something. All right, so I think it's time for a new float needle. That just pulls right out. So it's been a few days, but I'm back. And this is the uh, part number you will need. And it looks like that. Nice and brand new. Here's what the old one looks like. I'll make sure to clean up the float here before we go back together. So we've cleaned up the float and brand new float needle here we'll put in place goes like that put the float and the float valve into place here hinge oh darn it get this hinge pin in place Sometimes you have to wiggle things around. There we go. 
So I'm happy with how clean everything is. So I think we're ready to go back together. Now these gaskets here, now these gaskets here, um, I believe are still in good shape. This float bowl O-ring, uh, it's not cracked. I can still feel it has a ridge there, so I'm going to reuse that. Float bowl's nice and clean. I put this in here and tighten it up first this way. And that way I can put a wrench on this component, cinch things down because it wasn't tightening up for me. There we go. Now I'll be able to get this to tighten up. Let's see what size wrench that is. So I think it really doesn't matter which way the main jet goes in there. I think it ended up being, um, it was pointing that way, so I might try to get close to that position, but I think it doesn't matter. So the best I can come up with is a uh, 5 8 wrench. I can only get part of the wrench on there, but that should be enough, hopefully. Okay, so I have it held. Flip it. My special tool here. Yeah, that's tightening up now, good. You don't need to tighten it that tight. Remember, it's, it's a brass piece, so don't strip it out. But tight enough to seal that uh, gasket. Oh, I think that's going to be tight enough. And uh, the main jet ended up sort of where I wanted it. But once again, I don't think it matters. Be a good idea to lube up that little O ring in there. wiggle it into place. Yep, there it is. All right, so that's how you do that. And I could still use these. I didn't strip them out, so that's good. Not too tight. Tight as you can right before you strip them. There you go. So, we're all buttoned back up and looking good on the bottom side of the carburetor. I'm debating whether or not I should get in here. Should I get in here? All right, I'll get in there. See what's going on. Hopefully I won't have to replace any of these gaskets since you guys are making me take this part. Pry here. Oh! Be careful not to damage anything. I do want to see what's under here. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> I had to let those airplanes go by. So here's what we have we have a gasket and uh, it's stuck, so I'm not gonna pull it off. I can see what's going on in there. There's just a series of passageways on both sides. So I'll just spray some carburetor cleaner in there and, uh, and blow it out here. Make sure nothing got down in there. So we're looking pretty good and clean, as you can see. I'm just gonna go back together I don't need to get in there. What's going on in there is none of my business. Might be a good idea to tighten up uh, these four bolts while I'm here. Uh, that cinches it down here. A lot of times you'll find loose uh, bolts when you're working on stuff. It's a 5 30 seconds socket and it fits on there. So I'm going to check just to make sure all these are tight. That one was tight. I'll do it in a cross pattern here. That one was tight. Pretty tight. That one's tight. Yeah, I got a turn out of a couple of them. Part of a turn. I think this carburetor is ready to go back together. Move back over to here. It's been raining a lot lately, so I had to put the hood back on.
think it would be a good idea to replace this fuel line here. Turns out I could have uh, left this intact. I didn't need to remove that to take off the carburetor, but oh well. So in all the excitement, uh, the linkage came off. And the throttle linkage uh, does go on a certain way. If you see, that's where, it, that's where it mounts. It actually pokes in from the back, so basically you want to have it um, like this. Like this. Gotta hook up the linkage. That's the important part to hook up first. Hooks right up. I'm gonna hook up the wiring here. It doesn't matter which way the plug goes. And let's see if we can guide this baby into place. Yep, nice and easy when you have everything installed correctly. Alright, things are going together nicely so far. You want to cinch these down pretty good, but don't strip it. It is uh, an aluminum head that you're screwing into. So I'll tighten up all four uh, semi-tight, and then I'll go back and re-cinch them. It's nice. They're all easy to get to, for the most part. All right, time to replace the fuel line here. When a fuel line starts to look like that, you know it's time to replace it because that's probably what it looks like on the inside too. You don't want all that stuff going into your carburetor as it flakes off. <clears throat> New fuel line. Alright, fits good and tight. I'll put this guy back. Forgot to mark where it goes, but I'm sure I can figure it out. Not too tight. You can strip it out. I'm always saying that. Put this guy back into place. It comes up from the bottom if I remember right. Forgot to mark where this one was too. So I think it would be a good idea to replace the fuel filter here. Uh, it looks like I can see some, possibly some moisture in there, so let's replace that. These fuel lines uh, could probably be replaced too, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, actually, maybe I am. Look at that thing falling apart. Dang it. All right, I'll replace that one too. I think it'll be a good idea to uh, blow some air into this fuel pump in case there's any bad gas in there. Blow it out that way, blow it out this way. You know, I think we can te test this bugger out just like this. Let's see what happens. So if you're going to fire up an engine like this without the cover on, be careful because this thing can chop your fingers off if you're not careful. So stay away from the engine if you're trying to start it up without the cover, please. Put the parking brake on, choke on. It's going to take a little while for the carburetor to fill up.
Keep turning it. The carburetor's filling up right now. So this will help prime the carburetor. A little bit of starting fluid. That's right, chicken. That's right. Well, so I just realized that <clears throat> the muffler is not attached until you put that bracket back on here. So we'll have to put that heat shield back on. You can see what I mean here. Put this heat shield back in place. And uh, got to mount the muffler bracket here. Kind of tricky, you got to get up under here. Put the muffler back on. back to place. All right. Thought that was a little loud when we fired it up. It's just running straight out of the pipes. Okay, let's put this thing back together before we chop our fingers off. She's still steaming. And there was a lot of stuff that came out of the muffler. That just looks like muddy water that came out. A little bit of oil as well. Make sure you don't get anything bound up. There's a plate over on the other side here that can get in your way if you aren't careful. go. Make sure your spark plug wires didn't get bound up. Now these you definitely don't want to over tighten. I'm sure you've heard that before. And you can see they're shoulder bolts so you want to make sure to um, that they're shouldered correctly. See what I mean by a shoulder bolt? You want to make sure that they're in place correctly. So once again, I go all the way around and lightly tighten them. Make sure they're all seated correctly. Okay, now that all the bolts are in place, I just want to make sure that this cover is down how it's supposed to be. Otherwise, when this flywheel's turning, it'll rub. Time for this cover here. Looks like it's uh, 5 sixteenths. I'm not even going to tell you this time that you don't want to over tighten it. I'm not even going to tell you. Right on. This guy back on. air filter back in place and we're good man let's start this thing up and bask in the glory shall we